If you're trying to rush through the form, trying to impress someone by doing it fast, that's what I'm talking about. That, in my opinion, is a common mistake. Because so then when you do that and you apply that same principle when working with a training partner, that is what's going to take you to that next level. But then you have to learn to drill your techniques, your finding applications, and break down that form. In Applied Wing Chun, we call that dismantle the wooden dummy. Hi everyone, welcome back to my show. So I'm really excited for today's episode because today I'll be discussing the Wing Chun wooden dummy. So I've got a few notes here on my phone. And uh, so the first point that I want to tackle is what's it for? Like the main purpose of us practicing on the wooden dummy, common mistakes, and other alternatives like other training equipment that you can use if you don't have a wooden dummy. And finally, how to improve your technique. So you want to make sure you stick around to the end because I will reveal really the main purpose for us practicing on the wooden dummy. Okay, first of all, let's start off with what's it for? Now, of course, if you use common sense, you'll realize that the wooden dummy is for you to practice your technique when you don't have a training partner. Okay, now it fascinates me when I think about how is it that people came up with this idea hundreds of years ago in China on how to work on their given techniques with a wooden stump where they would just put some wooden arms on it and a leg and off they went practicing. Now, what fascinates me is not so much that, but how over time they refined the design for what we currently use nowadays. Now, what do I mean by design? I mean by the angles that the arms are positioned, right? Where the leg is positioned, like how many arms? Why not have double the amount? Or maybe why not have just the single arm? And things like that, of that nature. See, the wooden dummy that I use is the wooden dummy that was given to my C4 by Ip Man. So Ip Man gave it to my C4. He gave him the specific measurements. And those are the measurements that my C4 uses for his wooden dummies and the ones that I use because I get them from my C4. And you may ask yourself, well, why is that important? It's important because the way you position repetitiously your arms on the wooden dummy is how you're going to build habits in arm placement, connecting the body with your horse onto the wooden dummy. So it's crucial, it's very important how these arms are placed on the wooden dummy. It's funny, a few years ago, um, a guy approached me saying that he was importing wooden dummies from China. And nowadays you can get wooden dummies all over the place on the internet and Amazon and eBay, you name it. So I asked him, what about the measurements? What are the measurements from these wooden dummies that you sell? And if you're listening to me on a podcast right now, I want you to visualize the guy just bringing his hand up, up to his forehead and saying about, uh, yay height. <laughs> right. So obviously he didn't understand my question. So what I was referring to wasn't the height of the dummy, because of course, if it's on a wall mount, you can adjust the height. I was referring to the arms, how they were placed on the dummy, the angles and so on. So when you work on your techniques, you want to make sure that you're using the wooden dummy as a training tool for you to build good habits. Learning the form is one thing. Some people can learn the form in a day. That's not the hard bit. The hard bit is perfecting the form, is making sure you break it down and then work on these drills that will help you build these good habits. Okay. Now, that's the main purpose for the wooden dummy, right? Learning these good habits. But you never want to use the wooden dummy just as a tool for you to work on a form because that's just called it like, you know, warming up with the alphabet. But then you have to learn to drill your techniques, your finding applications and break down that form. In Applied Wing Chun, we call that dismantle the wooden dummy. 
that is where you get like the the real essence behind the wooden dummy. Now, what are the common mistakes when, when people practice on the dummy? Number one, they think that they need to fight the wooden dummy. It's so funny when I see people take pictures, like especially, you know, instructors or these big name seafoods posing for whatever, a magazine or a website, and they pose like as if they're fighting the wooden dummy, like with these mean faces, like they want to strike and kill the wooden dummy. And it's hilarious because really, I mean... The wooden dummy is not, <laughs> the main purpose is not that. And even if you hit the wooden dummy with all your might, what what do you gain from that? Just, you know, hurting yourself. The wooden dummy has no feelings, right? You can't hurt it. So that's not it. The, the main thing is what I just mentioned before, but the common mistakes are thinking that, number one, it's a tool for you to fight against right? That's a common mistake, meaning you're using way too much power on it. Number two, another common mistake, speed, like people want to rush through it. You can see it online all the time when these guys are going cluck, 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 and it makes no sense. You can break it down if you're drilling a specific combination and then that you want to speed it up, by all means, go for it. If you're trying to rush through the form, trying to impress someone by doing it fast, that's what I'm talking about. That, in my opinion, is a common mistake because there's no point in rushing through it. You want to take time. It's like singing the alphabet as fast as you can. And what are you going to gain from that? So that's another common mistake. Third common mistake, what I see when people do the wooden dummy, they focus on their arms and they forget their horse, their stance. Everything comes from the horse. You need to be grounded and rooted, okay? Now, sometimes I'll post a video of, say, myself or a student of mine doing a few moves on the wooden dummy, and I'll post it, say, on Instagram, and people from other Wing Chun lineages will look at us applied Wing Chun practitioners having our horse a little bit wider than what they are normally used to. And they'll say, oh, stance is too wide. Now, you have to understand a few key points. Number one, the stance, the width of the stance is determined by how tall you are, right? That's why usually when you're a beginner, you open it with, you know, two steps. Some people open it with three steps. So the key is finding the width that supports your height. Number two, the width of your stance should support the technique that you're drilling. So your technique is supported by the horse. Now, if you're shifting, if you're stepping around the wooden dummy, you have to look at it like as if you're really applying the technique against an opponent and not just kind of like brushing your hands around the wooden dummy to make it look good or make it look fancy. So you have to be grounded. Now, that doesn't mean you have to whack the wooden dummy as hard as you can. No, it just means you need to place everything and making sure that the movement is done in unison, where you're connecting the top of your body with the bottom part of your body and bridge that, connect that. So that way, when you're going in and around and jamming and stepping away and around again on the wooden dummy, you have that connection. Connection does not equal power. Can you use power? Absolutely. Do you need power? No, because we're talking about the connection. Okay, those are common mistakes. Alternatives or other pieces of training equipment. Now, I am a big fan of the spring arm dummy. I've got a few in my school. If you've seen, you know, us post some videos on YouTube and Instagram working on it, you can get someone to custom make your, if you're handy with, you know, tools, you can do it yourself. Just get a spring stick, uh, a piece of... Uh, like a little wooden pole, and then you can work on these techniques on it. So how can you improve your technique while working on the wooden dummy? First, learn the form, right, or learn a sequence. 
Number two, take your time and try and find the right connection between your horse and your arms. Number three, now when you're doing that, try and get into flow state where first you're going to be in your head a lot because you're going to be thinking a lot. Which is the next movement? How am I supposed to step around and in and all that? But once you pass that stage, you want to try and get in, get into flow state where you understand how to position your arms, how to do the technique. But guys, here's the secret behind it. The main, main purpose for us working on the wooden dummy and learning this form and these sequences is for you to understand and be one step ahead. Now, what does that mean? If you really pay attention to the sequence, right, and open your eyes and your mind to what it is that you're doing, every sequence is teaching you that once you apply one technique, it already teaches you the follow-up. And because you understand already by expressing and practicing and doing that single form and you know already the next one that is already teaching you to be one step ahead because then you build that muscle memory and especially if you break it down and you dismantle it when you go for technique one you already know the follow-up the two the three the four so then when you do that and you apply that same principle when working with a training partner that is what's going to take you to that next level. Because if you understand to be one step ahead of your opponent and already have that possible solution for their counter, for their follow-up, then that is what makes you a great martial artist, a great fighter. So I hope you can wrap your head around that last bit of this um, episode because that is the golden nugget. I've spent a lot of time talking and learning and discussing these issues or these topics with my Sifu. And when he revealed that to me, it was like a light bulb went on. Then everything made sense because the dummy is not just for us to work on a form repetitiously with no essence. Okay. So guys, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget if you have any you know, questions or follow-up questions or even if you have an idea for a topic you would like me to cover, guys, don't be shy. Contact me, write it down, email me, you name it, and that way I can tackle it at a future episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, guys, so that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button, share it with a friend. And guys, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. There's plenty of material there to keep you busy training and taking your Wing Chun to the next level. If you haven't already, check out my online academy. It's umauniversity.com.au. There's a free introductory applied Wing Chun course you can check out and learn from those videos as well. Having said that, I'll see you in the next one.